Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. I welcome you to another very interesting and important video in the series of metabolic pathways. So today we are going to talk about glycogen metabolism. Now glycogen can be made in your body and if required it can be broken down into glucose whenever required. So you need to understand I told you in the first lecture of energy metabolism where we discussed about the overview. You must understand this fact that your body always in your life is either in one of the two states. Either you are in a well-fed state or you are in a fasting state. And if you understand this by asking this question all the time you look at a question or you look at a patient that what is the status of this patient at the moment? Is this person in a fasting state or is this person in a well-fed state? Because this answer will then change the whole thinking process within your brain. If the person is in a well-fed state, it's the insulin world. The hormones are different, the processes are different. More insulin, more glycogen synthesis. But if the person is in a fasting state, other enzymatic machinery, other hormonal machinery, oh my God, glucagon, cortisol, epinephrine and norepinephrine, and all these things are in action. And you are now not making glycogen, but you are now degrading glycogen to make more and more glucose. So it all depends if you are doing glycogen synthesis or glycogen breakdown upon if your body is in a fasting state or in a well-fed state, okay? So let us discuss glycogen synthesis mechanisms and then glycogen breakdown mechanism both in this one single lecture. Let's begin. So it all begins with glucose entering the cells, say for example liver cells and it is converted into glucose 6-phosphate. There is nothing new in this, you know this already. If it's liver, it is entering via which glute transporters, glute transporters 2, which only, only, only works, it's a high KM value, it only works when there is plenty of glucose. So the more glucose in the blood, the more it enters in the liver, okay? Now, where does glycogen synthesis occur? It primarily, it can occur in um, many tissues, but primarily liver and muscle cells, okay? So, uh, we're talking about these cells here. So, gl glucose enters and is converted into glucose 6-phosphate by utilization of ATP. There's nothing new. You can see my glycolysis videos, overview of energy metabolism video, all the links of those videos are in the description. Watch those videos to make this a real piece of cake for you, okay? So now you've got glucose 6-phosphate, the body converts it into another molecule by a mutation, by a mutase enzyme, which is called now glucose 1-phosphate, okay? Only the phosphate position is changed. Now, glucose 1-phosphate, once it is produced, it reacts with a very important molecule, which is called UTP, uridine triphosphate. And by this reaction, what happens, the glucose 1-phosphate and the uridine triphosphate, they interact with each other and as a result, this is produced. UDP glucose, uridine diphosphate glucose. Uridine diphosphate glucose. Uh, the UTP is converted into pyrophosphate, which is released and can be utilized in other metabolic uh, stages. But this UDP glucose, uridine diphosphate glucose, that is the major, major donor of glucose during glycogen synthesis. So glycogen is a big molecule. It is composed of a lot of monomers, a lot of glucose molecules. And from where do these glucose molecules come? These glucose molecules are basically donated by UDP glucose. So remember, UDP glucose is the major currency in terms of glucose donation, okay? Now what happens once the UDP glucose is produced? Now comes a major enzyme that you must remember for glycogen synthesis, and the enzyme is called glycogen synthase. Easy name. What is the job of glycogen synthase? To make glycogen. Easy, glycogen synthase. It synthesizes glycogen, okay? And the UDP is released back. See, we are not doing anything with the UDP in this reaction. We use UDP to transport glucose into uh, a glycogen molecule. Now, here is an important thing. In different biochemistry books, you will read detailed mechanisms of how UDP glucose transfers glucose onto glycogen. I know many students want to read that, but usually that is very, very low yield because it's not asked in the examination much. You should have the broader picture understanding. You should know when is glycogen synthesis happening. 
what are the controls what hormones regulate glycogen what is the enzyme involved okay uh, rest of the things they are low yield i can tell you that glucose molecule which is composed of six carbon so carbon one of one glucose molecule reacts with carbon four of the neighboring glucose molecule and it makes a bond which is called alpha one four glycosidic bond and it keeps on going on one glucose another glucose another glucose it's just a long chain of glucose monomers which makes the glycogen and these bonds are all alpha 1 4 glycosidic bonds also there is a supplementary enzyme which is called the branching enzyme what the branching enzyme does it induces some of the alpha 1 6 glycosidic bonds so glycogen which is produced at the end is is a very much branch structure something like this so you see glucose 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 linear in linear fashion they are attached by alpha 1 4 glycosidic bonds but there are also some branches which is alpha 1 6 glycosidic bonds so the linear is majorly formed by glycogen synthase but then we also have a branching enzyme which induces some branches but that is low yield okay what you need to understand is that glycogen synthase is the key enzyme regulating this process another 3d view or well it's a 2d view but you should have a view that what's basically happening all this glycogen synthesis process that basically happens on a platform there is a core protein on the protein this glycogen complex molecule is being built up glucose are being added and added and added the name of that protein is glycogenin you see in this in this image in the center there is the glycogenin protein and in the periphery are the glucose molecules being attached in very complicated fashion linear as well as branching okay so you can remember all this but i again and again saying this is low yield what you need to understand is what do you think will positively regulate glycogen synthase which hormone do you think will it be insulin or glucagon now here i want your thinking come on think think about this what is the hormone which will activate this insulin because insulin is released when there is a lot of glucose available so if there is a lot of glucose available you would like to make glycogen okay so insulin is a positive um, inducer of this enzyme and obviously glucagon negatively controls it so this is all you need to know for your exam purposes this is all you need to you know pass any of the board's exam about glycogen synthesis what is the donor of glucose in glycogen synthesis udp glucose okay uh, remember all this okay now this half of the cycle is making glycogen now let us also discuss how glycogen is broken down now again ask yourself what will be the condition of the body when glycogen will be broken down? Well-fed state or fasting state? Fasting state. So up till now what we have discussed happens in a well-fed state. When you have eaten a lot, when you have plenty of glucose, when you have plenty of insulin, this is what you make, glycogen. But when you need it, when your body is in the fasting condition, when you need it, it breaks down. And this is how it breaks down. Glycogen is broken down into glucose 1, 6, 1 phosphate and the enzyme involved is called the glycogen phosphorylase. There is also a debranching enzyme and um, you should also think about it. This particular enzyme, glycogen phosphorylase, will be induced by which hormone, insulin or glucagon? Glucagon, fantastic, because now the body is in the fasting state. Insulin doesn't work anymore here. So the major, major, major point to remember here is that insulin actually inhibits this process. Insulin does not want glycogen to be broken down. Insulin wants to make glycogen. It wants to make glycogen. So it wants to stop glycogenolysis. Basic concept, okay? And what will positively induce it? What will be the positive induce? I want you to think about it. And every single thing that I write here should make sense to you. See here, glucagon. Agreed? Yes, because that's a fasting state. What do you think about epinephrine? Yes, because in emergency situations, your body wants more glucose. So you want to break down the available glyco glycogen. You break down the glycogen, make more glucose. So this is what happens, making down more glucose by inducing this enzyme, okay? AMP, does that make sense in muscles? In muscles, I told you in my previous videos that whenever there is lack of ATP, this is actually designated by high levels of AMP. So your muscles say this, oh, oh, where is the ATP? I have a lot of AMP available, but no ATP. Adenosine monophosphates are there. But where are the adenosine triphosphates? Monophosphate, go, break down glycogen. And this is what happens. Adenosine monophosphate comes here, induces this enzyme, and glycogen is broken down into glucose 1-phosphate. Now, glucose 1-phosphate 
um, then glucose 6 phosphate but you know that that uh, well that's basically a reversible reaction but in glucose 6 phosphate if it has to be converted into glucose we discussed in the previous video where we talked about gluconeogenesis that there has to be a bypass taken and the bypass is um, available by and large only in the liver in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum so glucose 6 phosphate is converted into glucose by the enzyme very very important enzyme which is called glucose 6 phosphatase remember this particular enzyme is the final checkpoint if your body wants to contribute glucose to the blood so if this is liver and this happens in liver if this is liver and liver wants to send glucose out in the blood the final step would be glucose 6 phosphatase if glucose 6 phosphatase is not working glucose will not be added in the blood and this would mean that you will stay in the condition of hypoglycemia regardless of how much glycogen you break down you are continuously breaking down glycogen you are breaking down glycogen but glucose is not being released in the blood why because the final enzyme is not available if the final enzyme is not available glucose will not be added i am saying this again and again and again because there is an important pathology associated with this we will discuss in another video glycogen storage diseases there are six glycogen storage diseases and the first one of them that we talk about is the deficiency of this enzyme think about it if you are deficient in this particular enzyme what will happen hyperglycemia or hypoglyce hypoglycemia because you are not adding glucose in the blood so if this enzyme is deficient you will not be able to maintain blood glucose levels okay and that's a disease which is very very important for you to remember for boards exams it's called von Guericke disease now von Guericke disease is the deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase so if liver is unable to do this final step glucose will not be contributed in the blood okay and hypoglycemia will be there glucose levels will not be maintained and all the consequences will begin okay so here is the summary one more time we are discussing glycogen metabolism glycogen can be synthesized in the body which is called glycogenesis and glycogen can be broken down which is called glycogenolysis we need to understand that glycogen synthesis happen when we are well fed and this is controlled by insulin and glycogen breakdown happens when we are in the starvation phase and this is controlled by glucagon cortisol epinephrine all these sort of hormones okay now in glycogen synthesis the key enzyme that you need to remember is glycogen synthase it is obviously induced by insulin and stopped by glucagon when we are talking about glycogen breakdown glycogen phosphorylase is the key enzyme that you must remember it is induced by glucagon cortisol epinephrine amp and it is inhibited by insulin so your body can make glycogen and can break down glycogen as needed depending upon what are this what, what which state are you in at the moment so now you must appreciate my first video on energy metabolism the overview video where i said again and again the first thing you need to ask yourself is what is the status of the body well fed or starvation fasting because by defining this state you will then have the thinking process okay this is the hormone now being released that is the organ in action this is the pathway in action so starvation you will have gluconeogenesis active you will have glycogen breakdown active if you are starving but if you are in a well fed state more and more glycolysis more and more collapse cycle more and more atp production no gluconeogenesis increased glycogen synthesis so just by knowing what is the state of your body you can determine a lot of things and understand these pathways so this is all guys you need to know about glycogen metabolism all those structure details and you know the mechanism of how the bonds are being produced is low yield for you they don't test you on exams for these things but remember the overall picture remember the pathological association and that's all you sorted for glycogen metabolism i will see you soon in the next video if you like the video please subscribe to the channel share the video with your friends and i'll be back with another video on new metabolic pathway for you thank you very much